Hey YouTube, I would like to do an extremely unprofessional comparison between the AudioFuse Studio and the Audient ID44. We have the Archeria AudioFuse Studio in this box, and the ID44 in this box. And I have tried these uh, already. I've been using the ID44 for a little bit. When you open open the box, it's not really going to look like this. It's going to look uh, a little bit neater, obviously. Um, but they basically come with the same stuff, more or less. You have your adapter. Um, you have two USB cables in both of them, the USB-C to C and USB-C to A. They both use USB 2.0 because you don't necessarily need the bandwidth of USB 3.0. In terms of build quality, I really like the Audi Audient ID44. Um, you can just take a look at the front panel. Uh, these switches feel nice and snappy. I kind of like playing with these switches a little bit too much. And the knobs, they feel pretty good. Um, I feel like I could kind of pull them off if I you know, you know, did something stupid. So just as a warning. And Here's, here's the back panel, the this power switch is back here, it's just a switch. And the front panel, you have your headphone jacks and your line in. Uh, when I was using this, I noticed it, it gets a little warm, but it doesn't get too hot. So I don't think you have to worry about setting your house on fire while using this. Uh, one thing that I've kind of been a little bit ticked off about is these gain knobs are a little strange in that um, they're not necessarily linear, and I confirm with audience that this is the case. Um, so basically, when you go from 0 to 1, 0 to 2, and then like, you know, so-and-so up to 9 to 10, you're not getting like an, a linear relationship. Um, so I'm finding that I have to crank the gain up a lot, and what I do normally when I work is I'm using stereo pairs, and when I'm cranking the gain up that much, it becomes really tricky to get like an exact gain match between knobs like the slightest little bit of a twist is gonna really you know mess with your your DB um, okay so anyway let's open up the audio fuse studio comes in a little bit big of a box when you open it uh, you'll notice it kind of looks a little fancy like there's this nice padded thing in here and then you take out the device, which is still kind of warm, I was just using it, and you see this uh, fun, I don't know if you can see that at all, fun bit of marketing there. The USB cables that come with the AudioFuse Studio, um, they kind of look kind of nicer, but honestly, you can just, if you want nicer USB cables, you might as well just get your own USB cables, it's not a huge deal. Um, they also, since the AudioFuse Studio does have MIDI capability, but it doesn't have like true MIDI ports on the back, you have your adapters for MIDI in here. But other than that, basically it comes with the same stuff. I will say that I like this build as well as the ID44. I, I wouldn't necessarily say that this is any better, they're just a little bit different. I do like the fact that there is metering for each channel on the front of the AudioFuse Studio. Um, these knobs feel nice, there's a little bit of resistance to them. The buttons feel good. Uh, XLRs are on the front, which some people don't necessarily prefer. I don't mind it that much. Um, then two sizes for headphone jacks, which is kind of fun. Uh, the back is chock full of things. Um, the, the <laughs> you have USB here, which is honestly a great touch for an interface. One thing that the ID44 does not have uh, is you, you have the RCA jacks here for SPDIF. You need an adapter with the ID44 to use SPDIF. And this device can also send and receive Bluetooth audio, which is very nice. Both of these products come with uh, their own software control centers. And the ID44 honestly looks very sleek. I really like how it looks, and I haven't had any issues operating it whatsoever. Um, it just worked right away. And the AudioFuse Studio control software also was fairly painless to use. 
Uh, although I would will say that I couldn't figure out how to resize the window at first, so on my screen the whole thing was blown up like way past the you know borders of my screen. Note that the Audifuse Studio and the ID44 come with different sets of plugins. There's different software things, extras that you get um, from purchasing these devices. So I'm not going to go into detail with them. You can kind of see what your preference is online. I did take a listen to the headphone amps of both of these devices. I would say that the audience has maybe a slightly warmer sound than the Audiofuse Studio. Um, although I think that to most people you won't be able to tell the difference unless you're literally listening side by side to these devices. So I wouldn't worry too much. I feel like there's maybe a little bit more gain on the headphone amp of the Audiofuse Studio. Um, but I wouldn't worry about having to drive higher impedance headphones on either of these devices. So I'm not going to get too far into detail in regards to uh, comparing features of both devices. I feel like people can kind of research that on their own. But I would like to do a sound comparison between these two interfaces as well as my old M-Audio C600. Uh, this thing is, is an awesome interface except for the fact that I have to restart my computer every time I want to use it and the drivers uh, don't work with my current operating system. So we're going to hear some speaking sounds as well as some clarinet sounds with some different microphones and take a listen and let me know what you think in terms of how these sound. Alright, this is me speaking into a Shure SM7B dynamic microphone with no cloud lifter. Uh, the interface is an M-Audio C600. Fun fact, I had to restart my computer three times in order for the, the uh, interface to connect. Alright, this is me speaking into a Shure SM7B using the Audient ID44. Note that the gain is cranked up all the way to 10. And this is some silence just to hear what the noise floor is like. Note that my computer fans are running kind of off in the background. This is me speaking into a Shure SM7B using the Ar Archeria AudioFuse Studio. And uh, this not only has a minus 20 pad, but it also has a plus 10 dB boost. So you're hearing it currently with the boost. It is not all the way turned up. I'm going to turn it all the way up now. Note that my computer fans are still running. <laughs> 